Andrew, would you please tell us what your job is? Well, I am the chaplain to Iraq, Mm -hmm. and so they call me the vicar of Baghdad. I'm not the vicar of Baghdad. There isn't a vicar of Baghdad, but I look after church in Baghdad, and I run the foundation for relief and reconciliation in the Middle East. Yeah. The Vicar of Baghdad was the title of your book, wasn't it? Yes, because it was the title of a television Mm programme that they made on me just before then. So they decided that it would be called that. Mm. Could you just give us a bit of up-to-date information on how things are in Baghdad now? Well, things in Baghdad are pretty awful, actually. Mm. You don't hear much about it on the news. We still have bombs, shootings, people killed every day. And we don't have a government, and we don't have really a prime minister. So it's much the same as normal. Uh, And what are the particular challenges for you as somebody who's an expat working in the city, presumably with extra need for protection and so on? Well, I have a large number of security army and police around me all the time. All of them Iraqi, usually 35 with me 24-7. The challenge is to run the church, to keep things going, never to give up when we're blown up or shot at, and to um, find the huge amount of money we need every month to keep going. And that's part of the role of the foundation that you've established, is that right? Well, the foundation tries, but Mm. the sad reality is that mostly people give to people. Mm. So I can manage to raise money, and if I was here all the time, I'd raise plenty of money. Mm. But the problem is I can't be here all the time and have to go back um, to our people. Yes. It's, it's a foundation for reconciliation, isn't it? And, yes, it is. And in your past history, you've had numerous times and places where you've been involved in reconciliation between religions. Is that right? Yes, I have. Between In Iraq, between the Muslims and all the minority religions, mm. which includes Christians, Mandians, Yazidis, Fedi Kurds, Turkmen... What, do, what does reconciliation look like at the moment? What does reconciliation look like? That really depends where you are. Go on. And what kind Help. of reconciliation <laughs> you're talking about. But in Iraq, things are quite difficult because we were making considerable progress bringing the Sunni and the Shia leaders together but then all the funding which came from the Pentagon was stopped after the new president was appointed. Okay. You've talked a lot about hope, about being people of hope. Mm. How do you think the Christians in Iraq are I- imagining a future with hope in it? What are they looking forward to or wanting? Well, the Christians in Iraq are very negative about what they have experienced and about their future. And a lot of them don't have hope. And one of the things we have had to do in the church is to really try and enable them to have hope. I say, I'm not leaving you. I don't want you to leave here. And our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and Mm. righteousness. Mm. That's it. And so how do you cope with the fact that... I I think you mentioned that you'd lost 90 of your congregation members... 93. ...just in the last year. Mm. How do you as a congregation deal with that kind of a phenomenon? Well, the thing is that you only live each day for each day. You can't look ahead or behind. And yes, there are times when we cry and we mourn together, but we look after each other and we love each other and we hold each other through those difficulties.